For my slab built vase, I'm going to do a Mei Ping style vase. They were used as far back as 600 AD in China to display plum blossoms. That's the primary function of them. And so I'm going to cut this out. I printed it as large as I could on the 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. And then once I cut it out, I can lay it down on my slabs and use it as a template. So basically, I'm making like a geometric version of this face so it won't be rounded it's going to be a flat slab with edges on it another option is to add a rounded spout so it has some interesting contrast with a more traditional type of neck and lip that contrasts with the flat slab built body so i'll cut it out now very carefully i love this subtle curve that it has to it where it goes convex this nice shoulder coming down to concave like a little subtle skirt on it and then just a really straight sort of modest neck on the top got my slabs here and they were loosely wrapped you know, with the plastic just loosely draped over them like that for 24 hours. That's pretty much how you want it. Still moves, but it's like leather. It's stiff. Lay my slab down on the table. And hey, who knows? Maybe I can get my two vase pieces out of one slab of clay. Looks like that might be feasible. I have my slabs over here. And I'm going to cover them back up so that they don't get dry while I'm working. I'm going to very carefully trace my base. I want to make sure that I don't make any mistakes because it's all about the subtlety and the nuance of this form. So I want to be sure to capture that. Take that off. Now I'm ready to cut this out. This bottom part is actually going to need to be straight so that the vase can sit flat. Then I'll just cut this so I can get the shape out. And then I'll put this to the side. Plenty of room left on the slab. There we go. Now I can cut that out. And again, I'm going to connect these edges here. Okay, now I got two of these slabs and I'm going to set them aside and then I'm going to create my side walls. Probably a good idea to hold on to some of these pieces, especially bigger ones like this. You could even take this and roll it out thinner. You can still flatten it even more at this stage and then make a cup out of it. Now I'm going to create the walls for my vase. They'll need to be at least the height from here to here, but since there's some curving, they'll need to be even longer than that. So let's see which is the longest direction of this slab. If I use the whole length of the slab this way, it'll probably be just long enough. So I'm going to start by getting a nice clean straight edge. Any of this stuff where it's indented or just kind of thins out too much along the edge, cut that off. You don't need that. You want to make sure you have a nice, clean slab to start with. Depending on how tall it is, mine is closer to 11 and a half inches. You could go as much as, you know, two inches, maybe even two and a half inches wide if you wanted to. Um, so that's the wall going that way. Or if you wanted it more narrow and your piece is a little bit smaller, 
you could go as short as one inch. So I'll mark the clay at two inches here. Set that to the side. Then do another two inch slab. And then I'll need one more for the bottom. And I may as well cut it long. So what I want to do is carefully cut off this edge to create a 45 degree angle. I want to leave the very bottom edge because that part is going to determine the shape. This is where it's going to be attached to that piece of slab that's going to make the wall going that way. You want to have it hanging off the edge of a table or a board and then cut ever so carefully. See how I left the bottom like sixteenth of an inch down there? I don't want to mess up that edge there because that's my valuable contour. The top, I'm gonna leave that because I'm not attaching any slabs there necessarily. Cut this bottom edge. This is much easier because it's straight. This one is cut, and I'll put it to the side until I've cut all my other pieces. Now I'm going to do the sides and the bottom, and this is much more straightforward the sides just one long straight cut and I can line it up right with the edge of the board same thing leaving that bottom sixteenth of an inch or so it's good to make sure and just do this really carefully you don't want to mess up and start over really saves yourself time to be careful and do it once and do it right and if you mess up, hopefully you have some extra slabs. And then I'll cut one edge. I don't know where it's going to end necessarily, so, but this is going to be the bottom. That's going to be the bottom. So I know that I can cut this. The top, I don't know where that's going to end, so I'll deal with that later. That one's done. Put that to the side. side and then now I just need to cut that bottom piece and I'm just gonna cut the whole thing probably won't need it all but good to be prepared you're gonna have all these edges that you cut off and you actually wanna save these at least for now because you're gonna use them to help attach your vase together because they're the same moisture level they're gonna work really well as coils to go in the seams let me show you where the bevel comes into play the bevel does a couple things it gives a really strong attachment rather than just sticking clay down onto itself like that you can get an okay attachment that way but the bevel gives you kind of more surface area and a better attachment uh, and you can you'll reinforce it from the inside 
but it also makes it so that this edge is going to be exactly two inches so that your dimensions that you measured out remain true so you don't have to compensate for the thickness of the edge of a slab it's already the correct dimension so it's going to go right there along that edge score it real good real good scoring get my moisture put it on there now I'm going to score it again just to make sure that it's really well activated and then I'll get my long slab here score it and I'll moisten this edge and then score that you can use slip slip is good but here we're just making the slip on the surface of the clay really activating it this is a really important attachment so let's just use a little slip don't want it too goopy so I'm gonna line this edge up with the bottom real carefully put this down on here and I don't want to push it down past that edge just want to put it almost to the very bottom like to the bottom but I know I'm gonna kind of smack it on there real good and that'll that'll drop it down so I just want to be real careful about how I put it on and this is a little tricky I want to get a really tight bend so let's just use a tool bend it off of that tool okay now we'll cut this flush with the top of the vase straight down now I'm going to come down along that edge and compress it a little bit. You can use your wooden modeling tool. I'm going to use this one that's got the cut off edge to it. And I can just kind of compress this a little bit. Now I turn it around. And since I can get into this seam, I can clean it up real nice. So I'm going to use my wooden modeling tool and I'm gonna just compress this and I'm kinda of mashing these edges together I'm gonna to support it from the back so I don't push it out too far and then I've created a little bit of an indentation along here and that is where I can put a coil so I'll score in this little seam here and that coil is really gonna hold things together nicely slab built things really like to crack along those seams so you want to do everything you can to reinforce them so now I have this leftover wedge that I cut off and I'm gonna make some coils out of it they don't need to be pretty or anything but the reason why I'm using them is that they are the same moisture level as the slab and so they're gonna hold it together well clay straight out of the bag it'll get the job done but this is going to be a much stronger coil because it's already been compressed it's dried out at the same moisture level so it's going to shrink at the same rate real carefully running that coil along that edge get my next section going roll out that coil roll that wedge into a nice coil score it just mash this coil into the slab and this is the inside of the vase it should still be clean but you know people aren't gonna see this quite as well Do this one here. 
So I'll score that edge real good. Score that edge real good. Add some moisture on there. Activated. Score it. Score that moisture all into the clay. Same thing here. Score that again just to be safe. Get a little bit of slip. And then squish that on there. Carefully come along this edge and compress it. If you don't have this tool, you could use your wooden modeling tool. This edge here could do a similar job. Now I'll do this seam. Any seam that you can get to, you want to reinforce it. Score in that groove there. Add a little moisture, a little slip. Oil down in there, press it in. It's hard to get this just right, but do your best. If it's a little, it's a little organic. That's okay, but just try and make it as nice as you can. Just a little tiny coil for that top corner. Take a look at that edge. Looks okay. If you're doing a more geometric form, this is where you might actually use a paddle and just whack it all together. But here, since we have this very sensitive curve here, subtle curve, we can't do that. So we just want to push it together as carefully as we can. Feels nice and sturdy. I like how it feels. Now we'll get our next slab. This edge isn't quite lining up properly, so I'm going to cut off very carefully, cut off a little bit more here. All right, next slab. Come on down that I'm attaching, so I'll score this edge carefully. This edge and get some moisture on there. The video's sped up, so don't work that fast. Work carefully. Very carefully. Moisture. So after I added that moisture, I'm scoring it again to make sure that it really, the moisture really integrates into the clay. Get a little slip. Line that up right there. angle or I guess it's not 90 degrees but it's a it's a tight angle so I want to get in there make sure I get that tight bend happening in some situations you may even decide to cut that and attach another slab if you need to get a tighter cleaner bend
I'll turn this around and we'll fix this seam here. Compressing that seam. Use some of my leftover edges here. They're getting a little drier, but that's okay. Score in that seam. Score this coil here. Press it in there. And then finally this last little seam there, score this coil, moisture, bam, stick it in there, and then I will press this coil in. Same process for every seam that you can get to. All right, looking pretty good here. Now we'll get our top slab and first of all just check it and make sure that it looks like it's gonna fit in there properly score these edges so with this slab we won't be able to reinforce the seams inside unless you have really tiny long hands but I don't think you do so we will just kinda score it as best we can line it up as best we can, set it on there, and just kind of paddle it so that hopefully that'll make it stick down on there. This is especially important to make a good connection with just your scoring and your slip because you don't have that coil in this situation to reinforce the seam. So I'm going to be extra careful to really activate all that clay, make sure that slip is really integrated into the surface. All right, we are ready to add this slab. And I'm going to stick it on there. And I want to make sure that the contour of our top slab, right, this shape that we really carefully traced, that that is what's dictating the edge and not where the sidewall slab is. So make sure it lines up really well with the bottom. And then push that in. That's really satisfying. Now I can get my paddle or maybe just get a board. Putting a little pressure on there to help ensure that it's all squished together. Well, that should be level actually. May as well check that. This side can come down a little bit. Perfect. All right. Some of this decided it want to ride up a little bit, so I'm going to cut that down. Just spend a little time and smooth it together. Check and see if it stands up nicely. Got a little lean to it, so bang it that way. Check it with the level here. Look at the top, make sure that lines up. I'm gonna let this sit for maybe half an hour and kind of settle, hopefully stick together a little better, do a little more shaping on it. My vase has sat for about 24 hours, wrapped up tight, and I'm ready to resume working on it. Make sure your space is nice and clean don't want to get any crumbs and other schmutz on there. It's a little bit stiffer and even better for shaping, smoothing. So I'm going to do that and really work on these edges and just get it as clean as I can. Really crisp angles happening here and I want to emphasize that crispness, that cleanness.
working it with the edge of my metal rib, scraping off any junk that gets stuck on there. Got a little bit of an indent in the middle from that compression. And maybe I could fill it in with a teeny bit of clay here. Now it's time to clean up that top a bit. And it's really thick. So I want to thin it out. So just making sure it sits properly. So with my level, you can see it needed to go that way just a tiny bit. And I can fix that by just kind of banging it on the table, tilting it that way and just kind of banging it a little bit. And then check the top. So this side's definitely sitting a bit high. So thinning out the top evenly. And you know what? I was able to get in here with the coils, but not over here. So I should probably do the same thing. Add some coils, at least just like as far as you can see in there. Add a little water. And trying to make this as even as possible. Taking a little bit of clay out at a time really thin out that top so I should get in there and as far as you can see into your pot it should be resolved and I'll clean that up with a sponge Get rid of those hard edges. Still want it to be, you know, relatively crisp form, but I just don't want to have any hard edges. Then on the inside, get just a little bit of water. You don't want to let a lot of water get in there and pool on the inside. That's going to cause the inside to turn to mush and then eventually crack. We're about ready to start doing some mishima, some carving, some inlay on there. But I want to show you another option that you can do for the top. Say you want that top to be rounded rather than rectangular. So I'm going to start with a small ball, make it nice and round. And I'm going to make this into a rounded lip that goes up and flares out a little bit. Might be a little different than how the type of neck and lip is traditionally done on this sort of base, but I've seen a number of Chinese bases that kind of come up and flare out in a pretty interesting, beautiful way. And it's going to come all the way through there. So now I'm kind of pinching from both directions to make a pinch pot could be a little narrower than that one. So now I'm kind of stretching it thinner, rotating it, pinching it, rotating, pinching, kind of collaring it in, pinching it inward now. And then this would be the lip. If I make it too narrow, it's going to be more of like a bottle form and it won't be quite as functional. Still want it to have some good functionality to it. So I need to make that a bit wider. So I'm going to kind of stretch it out, cut it down a little shorter because I got to, right here it's kind of thin, so I want to get into that thicker part. So I'm going to cut it carefully along there. Just try and make this real round and even. So I'm going to spend as much time as I need to to get that looking nice because it's one of the most important expressive parts of the vase. You can call any vessel, any thing made out of clay that holds something, can call it a pot.
a vessel is a container, anything that holds something. So a vase, a bowl, a cup, a teapot, butter, dish. So now I've worked so hard on this rim here, but I'm just going to cut it off. Again, you don't have to do this. This is fine, but I think it's going to be more fun with my round rim. That contrast I think is going to be really interesting. But I need to get this cut a little cleaner and then I need to get it a little bit level. So take a look at the vase from a distance and just see if the parts are working together, if that's going to look nice. And I think it is. Maybe it's a little tall. What if it was what if it was a little shorter? Yeah, maybe a little shorter. I think that's about right. So I'll fill this in a little more. I was going to just patch it with a slab, but it's a pretty small area that needs to be fixed, needs to be closed. So I'm just going to add some coils to bring it in. And this clay that I'm attaching has sat out of the bag for about half an hour, so it's stiffened up a little bit. It's not straight out of the bag. You could use it straight out of the bag. It's just going to potentially not stick as well. could be more likely to crack later. Take a look at that. Good. And I want this hole to kind of line up, so I want to create a nice hole shape in there. That is so that it looks nice. As you look inside, it's a continuous neck going down. Doesn't look too chunky or jerry-rigged on there. And also for structural integrity, you know, thick things coming into contact with thin things can give you problems. You want it to be attached really evenly so there's no uneven thin spots. That looks pretty darn good. So now we will score it and attach it. Work on the subtlety of that shape. As you look at more and more shapes, more and more pots, vases, you start to notice those subtleties, what looks good and what doesn't. And even if you're not as experienced looking at pots, you'll start to see and you'll start to feel what looks right, what doesn't look right, and generally trust your instincts. We have a innate aesthetic sensibility that's going to help guide us as we work, so we want to use that to our advantage. Wet brush here to smooth it out. There we go. Another feature that I thought might be kind of fun is if this was sitting up on some legs. Give it a little negative space on the bottom. I think that might be really cool. This should be a real nice clean straight line. Using this tool, using whatever tools I have to create measurements. There we go. All right, I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to just cut in there. Then I'll have to add another slab to fix the bottom. So I'll start from just inside there. And I'll turn it up here. And then I'll cut straight across. And then I'll start to turn it down across here and down. And then I'm going to cut straight across. Take a look here. Okay. Comes out right where it should. And then I'm going to curve it this way. Cut along that line. Yeah, that's fun. I like that. You always want to clean up the bottom, make sure there's no hard edges. And then I got some slabs left over that I can patch this with. Now that I have this open from the bottom, this could be a good opportunity to get in there and clean up some seams. So here's a slab I had left over. And let's see if we can just bevel this. And I want to make
make sure not to mess up that edge. Let's see how that fits now. A little tight. Cool, that's going to fit nice and snug. So I'm going to score in here. You know what, I'm probably probably add a little coil right here too, right there, just to make sure I get a good connection. I don't want any cracking happening in the bottom here. There are other ways to make feet. I could have added them on there. But that gives you another set of issues to deal with, such as uh, the dryness of those feet. They need to be dry enough to support the weight, but moist enough to attach. So maybe you attach them kind of moist, let them set up, that sort of thing. Score, score, score. Nice and moist. Shove it right up in there. It's fitting real nice. I'm going to compress it in there. Fix that arch just aesthetically, make sure that it looks nice. Kind of bulged out there a little bit, so just cutting it down so it's flush with the rest of the form. Side looks pretty good. Make sure it sits properly. You can kind of push it down, rotate it a little bit, rub it. You can even do that on concrete, like rough concrete, and it'll sand it down. So it's pretty good. I'll probably check it again before I put it in the kiln.